Hey Math 31, I had a question on how you do number 25. So we have this question coming up about how do you complete the square when you want to solve a quadratic equation. And before we get going too much on that, I just want to remind you that if you ever want to solve a quadratic equation, there are three methods we have at our disposal. So solve quadratic equation, you could factor if possible, all right, you could use the quadratic formula or the third one, which is the one we're going to do right now, is you could complete the square. And I would say my, my personal choice, how I do it is if I can, I factor. So that's definitely my, my favorite one. And, and if I can't factor, I'll go ahead and use the quadratic formula. And the one I'm least likely to use is completing the square. The, the thing about these three methods is these bottom two, they always work. You will always get a solution if you either use the quadratic formula or complete the square. And the problem with factoring is that sometimes it doesn't work. And I just wanna show you off to the side here. For this particular problem, it is much faster to solve this by factoring because I could break this into two binomials, x minus 11 times x plus two is equal to zero. And then I could use the zero product property and see that either x minus 11 was equal to zero or x plus two is equal to zero. So ultimately I get 11 or negative two, right? And you can see that that's the same answers that I got down here, but it's gonna be way faster. So that's personally why I like factoring. That's why I put the star by that one. But the, the problem is it doesn't always work. Now, again, I would go to the quadratic formula rather than completing the square, but the direction said complete the square. So let's talk about how we do that. I'm gonna erase my factoring work so I don't have that there. And here's the method for completing the square. So when you're completing the square, what you wanna do is you wanna group, and let me get these in a different pen color, you wanna group your variable terms together and leave this constant off to the side here. And usually when I'm doing this by hand, I put a little space here because there's going to be some number that I'm going to add. And I'll talk about how I'm gonna get this number here that I wanna to add to it in just a moment. But there's some number that I'm gonna add there. Ooh, and as I look at this, I didn't even give myself enough space. Let me redo this with some space, Oops, same color. I want a little space here, and then that would equal zero. And I'm gonna add the same number. Well, technically, I'm gonna subtract that same number here. All right, now how do I get this number? All right, so here is the method for completing the square. The number that you wanna get that you're ultimately gonna put in that pink box. You're gonna put it here and here. All right, so the, the number you wanna you want get is you take half of the coefficient in front of the linear term, and square it. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like for this particular problem. All right, so the coefficient in front of the linear term for this particular problem is negative nine. So what that means is I'm gonna take negative nine, I'm going to divide it by two because I want to get half of the linear term, and then I'm going to square it. All right, and when I take negative nine halves times negative nine halves, we have fractions being multiplied here. So we're gonna multiply the numerators and get 81, multiply the denominators and get four. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this 81 fourths, I'm gonna add it here, and I'm gonna subtract it here. Because ultimately, if you add 81 fourths, and then you subtract 81 fourths, you're ultimately adding zero, so you're not changing the problem. So let me remove those highlights for a moment. Oops, and I'll put my four back in, all right? But then what happens is these three terms become a trinomial. And so what I can do is I can rewrite this as x minus 9 halves 
squared. And if you're wondering, well, where did I get this nine halves? It's the same place I got this nine halves over here. So let me just show you nine halves, oh, excuse me, negative nine halves, negative nine halves. Now you have to then on your calculator figure out what negative 22 minus another 81 fourths is. And when you calculate that number, you get 169 over four. And we still have that equal to zero. So now what I'm gonna do is move the 169 over four over. Right, so I have x minus 9 halves squared equaling 169 over 4. And now I can go ahead and square root both sides. The plus or minus shows up. These cancel out. Oops, hold up. That's not my best work there. So here I have on the left side x minus 9 halves because, like I said, the square root and the square cancel out. And then I have plus or minus the square root of 169 over 4. And both of those numbers happen to be perfect squares, so we're getting 13 halves. And then I add the 9 halves over, so I get 9 halves plus or minus 13 halves, which means we get 9 halves plus 13 halves, or, and I'm going to run out of space here, 9 halves minus 13 halves. And when you do 9 halves plus 13 halves, well, 9 plus 13 is 22. 22 divided by 2 is 11. When I look at this second set here, when I do 9 halves minus 13 halves, I have 9 minus 13 is negative 4. Negative 4 over 2 is negative 2. So that's how I get those solutions. And like I said, for me, this is much more work than I think is necessary, but the directions did say complete the square. One thing I want to mention, because you might have seen it written slightly different depending on what algebra class you came from. So sometimes what teachers will do, and I'm guilty of this too, is when we have x squared minus 9x minus 22 equaling 0, what we do is we actually just move the 22 over. All right, and then I go through the same shenanigans. And when I say shenanigans, the shenanigans I'm referring to are all of these things right here. I take negative 9. I divide it by 2. I take half of the coefficient of the linear term and I square it and I get to this 81 fourths. And so another way that teachers will do this is we'll just say we'll add 81 fourths to both sides. All right, and then what this winds up being is x minus 9 halves squared and directly here you get 169 over 4. All right, it's just a different way, perhaps a more efficient way of doing it. So you can, you have the option that you can add 81 fourths to both sides or where we go all the way back up here and let me use my highlighter and I'll turn it into pink so you remember, right? Or we add 81 fourths and subtract 81 fourths from the same side of the equation. All right, so again, completing the square, really long process, but that's how you do it. And one last side note, and then I promise I'll get out of this video. I just wanna make sure we believe that x minus 9 halves quantity squared gets us back to where we started. So if I FOIL this, I have x minus 9 halves times x minus 9 halves, right? That's x squared minus 9 halves x minus 9 halves x plus 81 fourths. So that is x squared minus 9x plus 81 over 4. And that does match, If and I'll, I'll change colors just so we can see it, it does match that trinomial up there. All right, so with that, um, that, that takes us through um, number 25. Thanks so much. Bye.